Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Tuesday, May 22nd, 2018. Looking at the National Hurricane Center homepage, we have an area of interest. Invest Area 90L in the Atlantic. Real quick, nothing in the Eastern Pacific to talk about today. So we do have this system in the Atlantic, Invest 90L. And for those of you that are new to the whole thing or to my videos, etc., what does an Invest 90L even mean? Well, real quick, it is the National Hurricane Center's way of designating an area of suspect weather, disturbed weather, etc., as an area of interest. So instead of just calling everything a blob of clouds or a disturbance or what have you, they have a numbering system, and they use the numbers 90 through 99 and the letter L for Atlantic. In the Eastern Pacific, it would be um, E. Actually, they use AL for Atlantic. But colloquially, that's how you say it, uh, us weather geeks just refer to it as 90L or 93L or whatever. And in the Eastern Pacific, it's EP, uh, and we just call it 90E or 92E. And then they go all the way over to the Western Pacific. You know, you have a 90 through 99 with a W for the Western Pacific, S for Southern Hemisphere, and on and on it goes. So invest area 90L, this is the first one. So it'll go 90 through 99. If we have a fairly busy season, we probably will have several of these invest areas, areas of investigation. So that's what that is. It doesn't mean that something's more likely to develop or less likely to develop. It's just a way to designate something sort of the, the first step in assigning computer models to it, uh, floater images from satellites, maybe tasking a reconnaissance flight or two if need be. And that's how they do it. So that's what we have. Invest 90L in the Northwest Caribbean Sea, tucked in there, very close to Belize. And you can see it here on this close up. And, you know, there's something in there. You can clearly see that. But you can also clearly see that it's, you know, most of the heavy weather is on the east side of where this little X is, the broad area of low pressure. It's kind of like a gyre or a larger, slowly rotating area of lower air pressure this Central American gyre sets up from time to time and sometimes you get a piece of vorticity or energy that'll come in and kind of kick the thing off close the energy in bundle it in and you get development of a more substantial nature I don't think that's going to happen this time and as we see there's only a 40 percent chance over the next five days and that's talking about this turning into a tropical storm or a hurricane. I just don't see that happening and if it does it's not going to be very strong. Uh, here's our low pressure area. Here's this giant feed of moisture coming out of the Caribbean all the way up into the southeast. We've talked about Florida and the excessive amounts of rain there elsewhere along the southeast coast as well and in some areas, inland areas too. Uh, I noticed last night up in the Raleigh, North Carolina area some of this moisture got up uh, into the, you know, beyond the sand hills into Raleigh, and there was some flooding again, Crabtree uh, Creek in the Raleigh area near Crabtree Valley Mall. It, you know, just craziness. And that's all coming out of this deep moisture feed directly tied into the tropics. So this is the system here, very, very poorly organized, which is what we expect for May. But it's interesting, there's a lot of moisture. This is a really, really neat graphic animation from the University of Wisconsin that shows the precipitable water which is very high through here but you can also see the broad turning right in here if you look closely I'll get rid of my telestration and you can see that broad turning associated with it it's really tight well, relatively speaking closest to Belize right in here and let's see if we can make it go faster and you can see it even more evident come on all right yeah, maybe a little bit. It's not as fast as I thought it would be. That's okay. <laughs> Sometimes things don't work out the way you thought. But there's broad overall turning, what we call the vorticity structure in there, and the high precipitable water. Uh, this is a really nice product being derived from the new GO-16 satellite. And, you know, it's interesting, too, because you can see out west here, very dry. Uh, including a good deal of the Pacific, not much precipitable water, not much moisture in the atmosphere. Lots and lots of it down here. So the big problem is going to be that this could get dumped 
into portions of Florida and the rest of the southeast. I don't think really as far west, maybe New Orleans would be it uh, of any concentrated nature. So New Orleans east and then Florida, I think, would be the biggest area. And then on up into the Carolinas, perhaps over the next several days, this is going to linger and be a real pain in the butt. And then after this, the pattern's going to change, and we have this big heat ridge that will set up, and we'll get into a more summertime pattern. But we're stuck with this for now, unfortunately. So here's the GFS 12Z run, uh, 5,000 foot level of the atmosphere showing that vorticity. These areas of green indicate different degrees of spin in the atmosphere. Uh, and remember, as I've said many times, I'm looking to see, and there's our system there, by the way, if anything becomes more rounded in appearance, tightening the energy, bundling the energy around a common low pressure area, as opposed to being spread out and loosely organized. So let's put this into motion over the next, I think this is a week's worth of animation. And you can see the system right down here, plain as day, but you can also see that it's linear in shape there. It looks like, you know, a blob and stretched out blob and that's not indicative of anything that is going to develop. You can also see this counterclockwise turning indicative of the gyre, the large broad low pressure area, but then notice you get these little satellites of vorticity rotating around that common center. There's one, there's some, and you know the model is having a hard time bundling the energy, which is good because we don't need a hurricane. But you know what? We also don't need 20 inches of rain. And all of that vorticity, all that energy, does represent the potential for some heavy rainfall. You know, anytime you see these areas of vorticity over you, they usually enhance the precipitation underneath. There's a lot of different ways to interpret the models, and that's just been my experience over the years. So you get these little pop-up blobs here and there, and if they set up over you, they could bring a lot of rain. And you can see over Florida, the GFS indicating several hours of that um, out around day between days four and five. And, you know, yuck, more rain coming your way in an area that's had plenty and doesn't really need any more. So this is where we start. This is where it ends. In between, you know, this is way out on Tuesday, the day after Memorial Day. There's the remnants of the energy and, you know, strong southerly flow, southwesterly flow coming out of the Gulf still a very moist pattern, lots and lots of rainfall. That's going to be the big problem from this system and some of the output here. This is from Levi Cowan's website, tropicaltidbits.com. The GFS painting. Now, this is just, you know, like they say, one model, one run. But this gives you an idea of the potential for heavy rainfall down here. Let's highlight it in blue. Uh, maybe 20 inches in southeast Florida. Now, don't go saying to yourself, wow, 20 inches is going to fall, just like we would never say way out a week from now that a hurricane is going to be in X location. This is a guidance product suggesting the potential setup for very, very heavy rainfall over the next several days, and southeast Florida could be sort of the hot spot, if you will, then maybe into interior portions of the southeast. But you notice from Mississippi west, it's really not that much overall. All right, so pay attention to this over the next few days, but don't think of it as a tropical storm or hurricane threat, because I highly, highly doubt that, honestly. Even if it's a weak, quote-unquote, weak tropical storm later on approaching the Gulf Coast, most of the activity be on the eastern side is going to kind of look like a big comma and very lopsided. But the potential for heavy rain, maybe some severe weather, water spouts offshore, things like that, you know, that's something to pay attention to, especially that we're going into the busy holiday weekend as we celebrate Memorial Day here in the United States. And that's something to keep in mind. A lot of people are going to be traveling, and all that heavy rain could pose a big problem. So don't take it lightly, but there's not going to be a hurricane Memorial Day. I can almost guarantee it. You, you learn to never say never when it comes to the weather, but I'm 99% sure of that. All righty? So that's it. That's all I know for today. We'll continue to watch it together. I'll post about it on Twitter and on the website, hurricanetrack.com, as needed. And I'll be back tomorrow with another video discussion. I am Mark Suddeth for hurricanetrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. We'll talk again some more tomorrow.